This video is for my dear ophthalmology residents all over the world. Let us learn SICS. The draping should be such that the eyelashes are covered nicely. Then apply a, a speculum. And now the ocular surface is thoroughly cleaned applying some drops of povidone iodine. This is a very important step. The ocular surface has been uh, prepared in the preparation room. A few drops of pobidon iodine has been applied and it has been kept for five minutes. And now watch this. This is superior rectus brittle suture. The eyeball was turned down using a muscle hook. The superiorus brittle suture is applied and this will stabilize the eyeball and making the sclerocorneal tunnel will be easy if we put this superiorus brittle suture. This is particularly necessary for the beginner surgeons. Experienced surgeons can do anything and this is peritomy. Peritomy is being done for about two and a half clock hours so that we expose an area of about eight millimeter. See the cataract. It's a brown cataract, nuclear sclerosis about grade five. And this is an ideal case for SICS. We can do FACO in such cases. I can do FACO with my submarine chop technique, but there are thousands of ophthalmologists around the world who will find it safer to do SICS in such cases. So, SICS is being shown in this case. One more reason to do SICS is that I want to teach SICS to my dear ophthalmology residents all over the world. This is a very nice technique. You must learn this even if you are a FACO surgeon. You must learn SICS because in some cases you have to do a sclerocorneal tunnel and remove the cataract or the pieces of nucleus through the sclerocorneal tunnel, particularly when there is a rexis runout or there is a posterior capsular rent with a lot of lens matter remaining in the capsular bag. And now this is the incision on the sclera. This should be about 300 micron thickness and uh, 300 to 350 micron. There are guarded knives available with upper Sami associates. You can use that. Otherwise, there is no other way to show how deep to go. You have to teach yourself how much will be the you know, force on the sclera to get an uh, uh, adequate depth of this initial incision. Once this incision is made, then sclerocorneal tunnel is started. You must do the sclerocorneal tunnel in such a way that the inner opening is about two millimeter more than the opening on the sclera. That is the opening in the cornea is more 
than the opening in the sclera. This helps, this helps in engagement of the nucleus in the sclerocorneal tunnel. And when we do the, you know, dissection sclero to make sclerocorneal tunnel on the sides, we have to follow the contour of the eyeball. Uh, otherwise, we may just cut the, you know, scleral flap. Uh, this is a side port on the right side of the main incision at about 9 o'clock or 8.45 o'clock and air bubble is injected to fill up the anterior chamber. Tripon blue dye is then applied over the ocular surface. And then this is a bit of adrenaline and then the dye is washed out. This is a 23 gauze Simcoe cannula. And now the anterior chamber is filled up with viscoelastic substance. This is 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. And now the sclerocorneal tunnel will be opened. Uh, Keratome is taken, it goes to the anterior extreme of the tunnel. That means it goes into the cornea till the tunnel is made. Anterior extreme of the tunnel and then it is, you know, goes downward and then we cut with forward movements only. Engage the keratome at on side and just by forward movement you cut it. If you just cut in both ways, going forward and coming backward, then there can be leakage or chance of leakage of fluid through the main wound is more than when you make a single plane. And now I am going to do uh, the capsulorexis with this cystitome, a 26 gauze bent needle. Since the cataract is hard, the nucleus is huge, the rexis should be large. The size of the rexis should be 5.75 to 6 millimeter so that the nucleus can prolapse into the anterior chamber easily. And now I am using the uterita forceps to complete the rexis. Almost half of it was done by the cystitome and the rest by the uterita forceps. And we have got an adequate sized rexis. Now hydro dissection. 27 gauze needle and BSS. The fluid is injected in small amounts at multiple points. And I'm sure that the fluid, you uh, know, hydrodissection has been done, but there are some uh, capsulocortical adhesions. Uh, to break that, I am going to do bimanual rotation of the nucleus in this case. And now to bi bimanually rotate the nucleus, a small side port is being made on the left side of the main incision. And now a Sinsky hook is taken in the left hand and the another one in the right hand and the nucleus is rotated. And then the two instruments goes through the main wound and then by rotation the nucleus is prolapsed out of the capsular bag and it is placed over the iris that is in the anterior chamber. And now we have to protect the corneal endothelium nicely 
so visco is injected both in front and then behind the nuclear mass in this case i am going to use an irrigating vectus here it is see how beautifully we can this is the trick very easily we can remove we can deliver the nucleus provided the wound is adequate and now after uh, the nucleus has been delivered we have to clean the cortex at this time i take a 23g simco cannula and flush some bases that is balanced salt solution towards the cornea so that the cornea becomes clear whatever cortical matter adheres to the cornea is dislodged and we get, we get a uh, better visibility visibility becomes much better and now there is some cortex at around 8 o'clock we have to go through the main wound and for that some visco should be injected and the antechamber should be filled up with visco because then only we get some time to clean this cortex the chamber doesn't collapse suddenly if the anterior chamber is filled up with visco now going through the side port i removed some cortex from 1 o'clock and 2 o'clock and now is the time to implant the lens the anterior chamber and the capsular bag is filled up with 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose and in this case i am going to implant a pmma lens with a 6 mm optic head goes the leading haptic goes in the capsular bag and the trailing haptic is also placed in the capsular bag by a uh, macpherson's forceps see the wound the wound is nicely opposed and when the wound is nicely opposed and there is when there is no gaping of the wound astigmatism is very minimal it is within uh, on diopter maybe uh, 0.75 or 0.5 diopter of induced astigmatism if there is if the main wound is not gaped if there is no gaping if the two wound margins are nicely opposed now after placing the uh, lens in the capsular bag all the visco that is behind the lens and in front of the lens has to be removed unless we remove the visco nicely unless we are meticulous about it we cannot be good surgeons so always remove the visco very meticulously because retained visco can cause lot of discomfort to the patient it can co it can increase the intraocular pressure it can cause stemy corneal edema and a lot of problems can happen even tasks can occur because of this retained visco and now i am uh, using the bimanual irrigation aspiration of fecu surgery to remove some more visco and now this is emoxy and then the side port is closed by corneal stromal hydration and now 
we have to oppose the conjunctiva to the limbus nicely this is final lavage and formation of the anterior chamber and see the wounds the wound the anterior wound margin and the posterior wound margin are so nicely opposed so we just have to uh, uh, advance the conjunctiva to the limbus we have to oppose the conjunctiva to the limbus we need not suture such wounds which is so nicely opposed this is gentamicin and dexamethasone some chemosis is being created so that the conjunctiva goes forward and towards the limbus and now i'm going to apply a releasable suture on the right side of the peritomy where i have done a small radial cut this is personal preference i don't want to use cautery and burn the cells and shrink the tissue to cause a position of the conjunctiva i don't like it so this is my a personal preference to use a releasable suture see the uh, two bites are taken on on the anterior side another on posteriorly and now uh, after pulling the suture we are going to make three loops watch this hold one two three three loops hold it and pull it and just if we cut it here and then pull it this suture see what happens it opens so we can remove this suture easily in the uh, outpatient department using a uh, sterile forceps so you cut it here and see how nicely the wound is opposed so here we conclude the case thank you very much for your attention i wish and i want that you learn exercises this surgery very well because it is not possible to do feco in all cases there will be some uh, uh, patients with rock hard black cataracts where uh, you may not have that cuts to do feco but if you do a large incision deliver the nucleus nicely easily and do a nice cortical clean up and implant the lens the patient will get very good vision if necessary don't hesitate to put a suture in the main wound it's necessary when there is some gaping of the wound and when the size of the wound is more than 7.5 mm that is my thinking thank you very much for your attention hope this video will help you in learning sics be a comprehensive surgeon learn both sics and feco and we give very good vision to your patients be god to your patients